Haas for this matchup here in week three of ECL 47 Sangal versus Koi. Yeah, cast to start the game. We decided we were ready. We hit the big red button on our desk, which means the players can finally do what they are here to do. And, uh, well, that is click on some heads. And we're going to be getting into the pistol round. Now, of course, as you mentioned, it is Sangel's pick, which means Movistar Koi had the choice coming into the start of this first half. CT start for them. And there's quite a lot of armor that's been bought up here. A couple of flashes as well. So, um, yeah, let's see what they're going to be cooking up. Doesn't look like there's a catch-up for the CT side, though. That can always be a bit of a dangerous one, but on a pistol round, eh, sometimes you, you might be able to just get away with it. For now, of course, we're going to be going for a quick execute over towards B. I say quick, more like a, a decisive execute. Yeah. You have the whole team just kind of hanging out, waiting, a little bit of util to play off of. We're going to look for the right timing here to really pop some prize into Moby Star. Oh man, there is a couple flashes and smokes that are all raining in right now. Down to the Julies up close and personal. Great cross here placement. No kill coming through though. x Cloud is the one who opens up the site, but there's Mopos to deal with. We highlighted him in the pregame and he's already standing up here in the pistol. Come oh yeah, yeah, good kill coming through. Minus <laughs> doing work with the double action third frag from the IGL right now. A lot of kills coming through, and I mean the bot plant hasn't even been a factor just yet. The Dodo fighting tooth and nail. He knows where both of these players are, but how does he root them out? And I don't think there's a chance for him really here to stop a bomb plant from going down. There you go. Punch the digits in. Stadoto's repositioned up to heaven, but they should be aware that he has made this movement. So it's all going to be keeping a lock onto him. There you go. Shot rings through. Spots out one, but that's his position completely telegraphed. Great free position here from Liners as well. If Sudoto peeks out even just a millimeter, he should go down relatively easy. Nice little one, two, three swing there. And that's a pretty decisive round for Sangal. Yeah, I'd say so, especially considering the fact that they execute into what, like four players on that B bomb site, and they're still able to get across the line. Really good kills coming through from Linus. The IGL of the team standing up. One of the former members of the Young Ninja squad. I mean, you just kind of feel like those guys have all gone on to find some sort of success. You know, Fuzi playing in Rare Atom. You've got uh, Nilo who's doing really well in Mets. Four DTRs there as well. There's just a bunch of these examples of guys who have been in that academy team who have just gone on to find success. And uh, Linus is certainly one of them. Mm -hmm. It's an interesting force coming through here from Movi Star. They want to try and match some of the firepower from Sangal, but if it doesn't go well, it could spell disaster for them. Stadoto with the sniper rifle in hand. Get the damage with that. Oh, but it's a rush into underpass, and somehow it's Movi Star who come out on top with the trades. Yeah, certainly a good way for them to start off here with the force buy. And they're going to fall back into the bomb sites as well. They've got the man advantage. They've recovered some weaponry. Sangal have read the situation pretty well. There's a big window still open towards say bomb site. It's just the scouts of Sudoto here. Tagged up Sarsal and it's going to call for the rotations to come up. So he's actually done pretty well to keep them at bay. And he's bought a lot of time here for his teammates to join up with him as well. Very quickly forced off of his angle. But as you said, stalled out Sangal quite a lot and brought in the rotations. Nice little boost up here. See if they can spot anything out. Smoke's cleared. But no one's pushing just yet. Now, do Sangal realize that it is just a waiting game? Nope, there you go. Smoke's come out. There's no way in hell it's going to be a rotation. And immediately the site is flooded. x let looking to see if he can catch out the Dodo here. And he does. One for him. But he's traded out three versus two retake scenario here. But Movistar... Bring it down to just one man left alive, and he cannot hold the line. That's a pretty damn clean round. Yeah, really good work coming through from a V-Stark, all things considered. I was surprised x Cloud actually went as deep as he did there to try and take the fight with the players towards Bank and Dumpster, because there's no way out there. You're committed to the gunfight. It's a four versus three as well. You know you're playing against forced up weapons. You don't really want to be closing the distance. I mean, after the bomb plant comes through, you, you can't play post plant from there. You're, you're just going to take the fights immediately, and he got overwhelmed. I mean, Sarsal was the one in the back lines with the MAC-10. He had the Galil, so... Just seemed a bit uh, sporadic from Sangal there. I guess it's to be understanded, or it's understandable. They were chasing the round down by a man, didn't have great health, but uh, yeah, well worked by Movistar. A little bit of chaos there as they attempted to make their way in. Ooh, 
nice molly deny the rotations and this this map control from movistar is fantastic they're not allowing sangal any space now if sangal do choose to push out it's gonna be a lot of information garnered over relatively easily so movistar have cornered the market a little bit yeah and sangal are gonna be kind of forced to either take a very early fight in towards mid or rotate entirely Yeah, not really the standard approach. I mean, going to be forced back quite easily here. Haven't taken much contact. It's the Dodo. I would love to have a sniper rifle in that position. Of course, not afforded that luxury. AMR-12 is not very friendly with the economy towards AWPers, is it? It's tough mm. to get the gun a lot more often compared to Counter-Strike or CSGO, should I say. Maybe he can uh, steal a scout away when this round is over. But for now... Seems like Sangal are going to be able to just creep past Adam S. Good little bit of util coming through here. No, oh, he hears the footsteps. He knows exactly what's happening. And he just has not been cleared. He's going to come up behind them for the backstab. But in the meantime, the site is not being overrun. There's a few kills coming through here for Sangal. But Movistar do a fantastic job of holding Ooh. the line. Oh, there's just the BM. The USB is coming out. And it's last one. Sousel cannot make anything happen. I can't believe our WG actually stays alive to tell the tale to his grandchildren there. I mean, he was brought so low initially, and then he even just pulls out the USP and runs further forward. <laughs> Nothing about trying to reload his gun and stay alive. I guess he just wanted to take the fight with his teammates, didn't want to sort of bait them to a degree. So, well worked defense there from Movistar on the bomb site, weathering the storm, and, you know, Sangal don't get a bomb plot means they're going to have to settle for an eco. And uh, the mix between the Portuguese and the Spaniards should be able to get a third for three. And of course, tons of money in the bank, so Stroto won't settle for a, uh, a second-hand scout. He has picked up that AWP, looking to get some use case out of it. And Movistar, again, with some really solid map control here, shutting down a lot of those early rotations. But they do give a lot of time for a, a change of mind. However, Mopaz getting quite aggressive here. You can see a nice crossfire come through. He doesn't need a crossfire. He's good for two. Eventually, we'll get traded out. But here you go, the second player very easily mows down the next two line is the last one left alive there you go flash doesn't meaningfully connect and it's a fairly clean affair yeah you take that four players staying alive for the ct side gonna good gonna be a good boost to their economy but this is the moment now for Sangal where they're gonna look to make a mark do it for sam guys she was saying she wanted to see movie <laughs> stock boy on the t side we need some uh, some wiggle room there so you guys have to put up a performance here to give us uh, something to work with going into that second half. Let's see what they can do here in the gun round. They don't have as much util as they would have liked. Mm. Of course, prioritize the smoke grenades, but it's pretty much just one flashbang on each player. Three mollies coming into it. So Linus doesn't have as much to work with as he would have liked as the ideal. And this crazy streak, we're seeing why Movistar opted not to uh, invest into kits in that first round. Having that extra money did so much to help kind of pivot them to that snowball and for now again sangal changing things up a little bit more of a mid presence the dodo holds on oh that's go oh dear lord the timing on that almost ended him but he's able to just sneak away yeah, a bit of a reposition coming through here focus towards long for the ct side this is a bait and switch because adam s will take first contact and then Davi G, who's playing anti-flash right now, shouldn't be cleared once the fight with Adam S has finished off. You've even got Stadota with the AWP in the A-bomb site to further compound that situation. Sal's the one who's coming come into contact with them first. There we go. Do they clear the corner now? That's the big question. Oh, man. It's all about Davi G. What they've built into, and he'll get the frag for free. But that's just one. I thought he was, might get a little bit of impatient there. I thought he might try and swing out in much the same way that Adam S did. And that would have been a disaster. But he holds the line. And he's able to get that trade off. And that's fantastic for them. Now both sites, two bodies. This is a great opportunity for Sangal. If they can do, if they can overrun properly, they might be in with a chance here. Dodo forced off the angle so early. Oh my god, that trade is disgusting. Gets the first one instantly deleted position from Davy G. So known because, well, that's where he got that kill earlier. Well, in long, not that exact spot. Yeah. Really well worked exit coming through from Sangal. That frag from X Cloud was just beautiful to take down Stododo. Instantaneous headshot, and that's enough to just lock in the round. Movistar Riders, or rather Movistar Koi, don't want anything further to do with this one.
can comfortably afford an investment in the next round, just Mopars who doesn't have any cash. But uh, not like Sangal had anything going for them there, you know, Sam. They were down by a, well, I guess, was it four versus four? Started to make their way towards the site. They then lost to Dodo or lost a player to Stododo, had to trade him out. And it was a pretty big brawl for them to get into the bomb site, but they made it look easy considering. Mm. I mean, obviously that opening frag is such an important piece of the puzzle and Davy G being uh, over towards long side, realizing that that's likely where he is. They do a really good job of taking advantage of that little bit of space granted to them. And at that point, last two players decide, you know what, we'll, uh, we'll hold on to our weapons, thanks. And they kind of needed to because Cash not looking to be the healthiest despite a nice three round consecutive win. Losing this round could put them in i mean it will it'll, it'll absolutely destroy their economy so uh, nice early timeout used here and that's that's the mark of a of a really strong team as far as i'm concerned you know they lose one round and they go all right hang on there's been an adaptation here and we cannot let it turn into a thing we've got to stomp it out as quickly yeah. as possible and knowing that cash is on the line so they got to do it quick and they got to do it clean yeah for both teams whoever loses this next round is going to be economically reset so one of those swing rounds here in the first half. Sangal win this three all anti eco. They get the lead at that stage. They'll be feeling really good about that start on their map pick. We know Movistar Riders have. Oh, oh man. I haven't cast them yet as Koi, you know. I think I'm just going to go with Koi. In that way, it's a completely different team in my brain. Just a bunch of beautiful fish. Um, no, uh, the, the thing is, is um, we know that Koi have a pretty vulnerable overpass. So if Sangal can get off to a strong start, then maybe we see. Sweat. Good lord, all right, some serious aggression in towards water here, and Movistar will give themselves the man advantage so early on in the round. Of course, Sangal now making their way over. They might run straight into the edge of the key of Stododo here. Beautiful flash, baits out the shot. They know that the AWP is here, and that's going to force Stododo to have to reposition. Yeah, at least a bit of ground being taken up here by the T side, despite the fact that they have lost X Loud already. They do still have the option on the opposite side of the map in line as he's trying to, trying to have a bit of presence and make sure that Koi don't get too much control or information. Adam S though, off the back of the flash, bites off more than he can chew. I don't think he was expecting so many players to be around the corner as he swung. And Sangal are very happy with that. They've just essentially been gifted a kill back as a result. Four versus four. They've got the map split down the center as well. Two players on either bomb side. So Sangal have a good numerical advantage wherever they end up here. And it's going to keep the ball rolling into the B bomb site. Utility raining in right now. Very probably, I think Mopas has had to smoke himself off. Just can't do anything about it. Are they aware of Mopas's position? That's the big question. Linus is farming them right now. Mopas is waiting for an opportunity to bounce. But his teammates have all died around him. And he will follow suit. Good lord. Only losing one player. Now, see, this is the thing. We spoke about uh, Movistar. We spoke about Mopaz in particular being someone who can be pretty explosive and, and taking a lot of space and getting those early frags. But here's the... there you go. Here's the problem, right? Having that really aggressive, explosive play style, Sangal can just chill and wait for you to get aggressive. And they've been doing it every round. They get really, really aggressive, throw out some early util, look for that early information, and then they fall back. So when Sangal catch them doing that, when they catch them kind of a little bit out of position, a little bit away from the rest of their team, they can take full advantage of it, give themselves the numbers to work with. And from there, they can pivot to a round win. Now, this is a little bit more expensive than Sangal would have wanted. They would have loved to have taken that AWP away. But all things considered, happy to bank another round. Yeah, I mean, look at what that stunts the economy of Koi now. They're going to have to settle for an eco. They can try to play around Stododo's AWP. What sort of spawn does he have? Love me, the front spawn on CT side with an AWP. But he's going to be heading in towards that B bomb site instead. Yeah, I mean, Koi just make, need to make sure they don't become predictable. You always have to have some elements of aggression on your CT side. But like you said, Sangal are quite happy to just sit and wait for the aggression to come through. This is aggressive right now. He even hits the surf. Stododo was hoping and praying he would be able to get there ahead of the game. Now he's going to shift his focus elsewhere towards lowest door opens up. Nobody immediately on offer. I do like the way Stododo is playing this right now. I love the initiative that's being taken by the offer. He knows he has to make a play here in the round. That's the only way his team stands a chance. 
god, that was cheeky. The funniest thing is that he almost had oh. X-Floud. Oh, but he missed X-Floud on the cross. And of course, that will be a beautiful little uh, equalizer there. Thankfully, Orp's still in a recoverable position. So they haven't lost that big, I say investment. It was saved from the previous round. But they haven't lost it. It's still available. And Davy G's in such a cheeky spot here to get in behind them, to pincer in and crunch down. But look at where the bomb is. This distraction being made over towards the A site could be a game changer. Yeah, looks like it. The only problem is Adam S is in towards lowers, but he's not much. Oh, it's WG, excuse me. And he has an AK. That is a bit of a problem. That wall bang catches him off guard. That molly is awful, though. But Salsal doesn't play off the molly. B side's been compromised, but so has Salsal. It's a four versus two all of a sudden, Sam. Oh my god, Sangal let too much of this round slip away from them, and now Movistar have two rifles plus the AWP. Bomb has been planted, but there's no kit on board, so Movistar have a choice to make here. As the time starts to tick away, do they go for this, or do they opt to just hold on to the weapons that they have? Maybe do a little bit of extra damage if you could. Oh, don't risk the AWP. Holy one HP. Ah, oh, never mind. Zero HP. And that is the AWP lost. I don't know that this was worth it. As the bomb has been ticked, x rushes straight in. Gonna shut down yet another one. Adam S will trade it, but was it worth it? I mean, the problem was that Sangal actually smoked the diffuser. I think that's what allows for... Excuse me, I'm just very confused there. Okay, no, the kill, the defuse isn't stuck, obviously. I, what a chaotic round. What an absolutely chaotic round. I mean, the CTs do so much damage. Four kills coming through from them. But, um, yeah, Sangal will get across the line. Uh, that is a lot going on, Sam. My brain is struggling to compute what we just watched. Yeah, that that was pure chaos, and I, I'm here for it. But I'm, I'm still questioning Movistar Koi's decision not to go for the save, not to hold on to the two rifles I mean, that they picked up I it was 4v2, though, free. right? So you, you can't really blame them, I guess. Yeah, but no kit, and they knew they had no kit. And once that bomb had been planted, I don't know, high risk, zero reward. Uh, it was, it was a yeah. tough call to make, and unfortunately now their buy is broken. MP9 is not the worst gun in the world. You could potentially farm up a bit of cash with that. And in Mopez's hands, I think that's the, the exact person you'd want to have that on, on board. But they're burning through what little util they do have. Sangal might be in with a chance here. Yeah, I'm just thinking back. x does so well to get from Graffiti onto the bomb there to deny the... the uh... The diffuse, right? Mm. That was really clean work from him. And like I said, the smoke on the diffuser was what was costing them. That what was what cost them the round because Adam S couldn't see X Cloud. It was really good pathing from him. Sorry, I'm just slowly starting to compute what's happened. It's <laughs> taking me some time. But either way, as you say, we shift into an important round now. There's an open Ganginio. First time on the team side, he's had the weapon at his disposal, and he does have an opportunity to find the opener. But unfortunately, he's not able to capitalize. It's at least a little bit of info garnered. Obviously, Dodo playing a very dynamic AWP here, so now they're acutely aware of where he's posted up. That might just change their approach, but are they aware that Adam S is again going for an aggressive hold here? He could get caught out so easily. He's going to come around the corner. Oh my god! So close, but could not clean it out. He's instantly traded off. Beautiful utility from Sangal. Gets them another two kills on their way into the bomb site. Yes, they've taken a bit of chip damage, but bomb's going to get planted. And Movistar, surely now, the save. Yeah, the A side's looking pretty compromised right now for Movistar, right? They, they've they struggled a few times. Adam S has died a few times. He's been the fourth. Should I say he's died first a few times on the CT side now? Doesn't seem like they have a really... They're not that comfortable. It's kind of like he's playing close bathrooms, calling for a flash, which he wants to swing off of. And that's kind of been the approach a few times now. And it's just a bit of like a gamble approach in terms of when they try and make the play. And it hasn't worked out for him either, so... You can just see they're looking pretty unsettled. I mean, they ultimately had three players set up towards that A-bomb side, and they don't even get a single kill. I mean, Overpass is technically supposed to be the most CT side of the map in the pool right now, but they're really struggling to make this work. Dear Lord, the hunt was on, and somehow both players from Moby Starkway survived with their lives. Yeah, that, that was a round that felt like 
movie star had a lot of opportunities but it must be said sangal's util usage has been so good some of those flashes True. have been devastating and and movie star have just not known how to deal with it i will also say that movie star not saving until that previous round and you know they keep putting a large investments into a lot of these rounds means that their economy is constantly on like a weird knife's edge and then they're, they're not able to buy in properly they haven't been able to in about four rounds uh, so for for you know Sangal, they're going to be chuffed with this and taking yeah. yet another time out here as well, just to make sure that they stabilize, make sure that they um, stay aware of any adaptations that movie star might make. But they're going to be happy. Yeah, Sangal are loving life. They won the pistol, then lost against the force, had to eco, so lost a couple rounds from there. But they're back in the business right now in the driver's seat chair on overpass. And this next round, it's not going to be given to them for free, not on the silver platter, but it's still certainly going to be a round in which they have a significant advantage. Just that M4 on just, they have to sort of navigate. Where does he go is the question, over towards the B-bomb site right now. MP9 towards long, gap being closed. Sarsal heads in that direction. moments like this you start to think if only the the players had the cast of vision if he just known <laughs> if the timing if he, had known, been if, if he had wall hacks that would have been really cool if he had i think if, yeah, I, I actually i feel like it would be less cool if he had wall hacks because then it wouldn't be you know spidey sense it, it would defeat be... the purpose slightly <laughs> of the game like just a touch just a little bit yeah yeah it's always funny like when you show kind of strike to people for the first time they're always like, why, why can they see them through the walls? Oh my god, um, that happened to my dad the other day. It was so funny. Yeah. I, like, I hadn't even <laughs> thought to explain it. And I'm just going, this is so cool. Yeah. And he doesn't get it. And my brother actually looked at him and said, yeah, they can't actually see each other. Yeah, <laughs> and exactly. that's when my that's... dad realized, oh, this is actually pretty good. It is an important part of the, the game to, to relay through to someone <laughs> who's watching for the first time. Either way, Moby Stockway not trying anything out of the ordinary here. Would have liked to have seen a bit more of a gamble, and they will actually start to gamble, rotate up and stack on the A-bomb side, which I think is a good call. Not going to win the round with a standard, ordinary setup, but doesn't look like they're going to be able to do much here anyway. Not much time for Sangal. 20 seconds on the clock, so things could get chaotic if Just is able to find a frag or two. Only one, unfortunately, and that's the bomb site. Basically opened up, and I saw the Molly's gonna come through as well, just to make things a little uncomfortable for Mopaz. How has no one noticed Davy G? What? What beautiful timing! Davy G does initially go down. Mopaz no. still alive, being sprayed through the smoke, and they—that was enough. That was all they needed to do to stop the bomb from being planted. That is the craziest round I've seen in a long time. Oh, Sangal, you've dropped the ball. That's crazy. They don't realize there's someone in the smoke. He comes out. Takes forever to kill the planter. Eventually, the frag comes through. Then Mopas is able to just jump up out of nowhere. Then he disappears through the smoke. And Sangal are just left scratching their heads. What on earth has happened? The round is in the palm of their hands, but slips through their fingers like quicksand. And that's the, the crazy part is because... By that point, you know, doing a little bit of quick maths, maybe they would have been aware that the buy for Movistar would have been absolute tatters. And they give so much respect. And of course, you, you don't want to underestimate a team like Movistar Koi, right? You don't want to go in um, without thinking about it, without being cautious and aware. But you said it, right? Down to 22 seconds before they finally mounted an execution. And for Movistar, with just a little bit of, like, happy feet, to deny that bomb plant from going down entirely it's just it's it's not a position that uh that sangal would have wanted to find themselves in and now the deficit which had become quite a quite a large one has brought itself down to only one round and movie star they walk out of that round where they spent very little with a ton of cash in their back pockets yeah, I mean, that's just what's rough for Sangal, right? When you're the underdog coming into a match like this, you can't afford to lose those sorts of rounds, right? That's just a huge reprieve for, for Movistar getting back into the game, which hasn't looked too good for them from the start. And it, it's just a, around Sangal are going to be a bit frustrated by, I would imagine. Um, things were going so well for them, and they fought incredibly hard, and the gun rounds as well to get to the position they were in. So, yeah, kind of rough for them, but bleak. Yeah, uh, we do just have some slight tech issues, guys. So we'll be jumping back in as soon as we possibly can. But there's only three rounds left in this half. Oh, there you go. Jeez, quick sticks. Uh, only three rounds left in this half. Sangal, one away 
from at minimum six rounds on their T side. This is looking a little bit dire for Movistar. Yeah, it is, but they've gotten a bit of a lifeline by winning that previous round. It's all about what can they do with that lifeline. Can they build on it? Because it looks like Sangal want to try and change up the pace a bit. They've been playing fairly passive defaults, building into map control, and then working into the A-bomb site. Now, though, waiting for an exec. Still showing some presence to the top side of the map. I like that. They haven't gone completely radio silent there. It means it's not like the CT side can make any inferences or any reads as to what to expect. And you can see there's still two players working in towards bathrooms, but that's all a ruse. That's all a fake, as they set up for the exec on the opposite side. Stangle of like trying these things a few rounds in a row. Oh my god, Util from Movistar chips away, forces Sangal back in. Well, the plan to execute B, it's either going to change or it's going to have to stall out. And you can see Bomb already making its way around the world, heading over towards the other side of the map. Mopaz, you absolute cheeky little... Little so and so. I'm gonna <laughs> jump in there with the. I, I'm not gonna say what I was actually thinking. I don't think that's yeah. appropriate for broadcast. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough, but he was certainly cheeky in that situation, jumping around with the MP9. Man, that's frustrating to lose your life in that fashion. But they have drawn a rotation of Sangel, so even though they're down by a player right now, they're still going in towards the weaker side of the map. No quick rotations for Movistar towards B either, so they could get caught in some trouble here right now, especially if this first frag doesn't go their way. Another player is making their way up short. Sousel first up on the plate, and he's going to be able to find both of the kills to blow the door wide open. Now, it's the CT scurrying to get into a retake position. A bit of a questionable swing there that allows so much space for Sangal. Now, Bomb is going to get planted. It's still two versus two. Mopas still has MP9 in hand, and a little bit of spray and pray could be all that they need. And the smoke is everything that stands between a win or a loss for both of these two teams. Now, Sasa will peek out instantly, mowed down by that MP9. Last player down towards Monster, but do they know? Time ticking away. Both players have kits. They're going to have to hunt this player down. Looking for him. Found him. And that'll be yeah. a defuse. Yeah, great retake from Movistar, all things considered. It was looking pretty difficult for them, especially after Sasla had found those opening kills the way that he did. But cool, calm, and collected coming through from the CT side as they just mop up the frags and make their way forward. It's going to give them a good boost of confidence. They level the score line up as well. At least for Sangal, they've got some round loss bonus and bomb plants coming through. But, oh man, they're just going to be kicking themselves with the way they lost that round two rounds ago, mm -hmm. and now what that could potentially lead to. Yeah, I think the uh, the Twitch chat's just caught up to that round. Um, so looking forward to seeing the uh, reactions to that shenanigan. But for now, two rounds left in this half. And I think Movistar desperately need to get these next two in their back pocket. It's a bit of a rough start. A little bit of damage in onto Justin. He's still going to be holding on to Monster there, seeing if he can catch any of these players trying to funnel through. And again, Sangal playing this really smart, playing it slow, waiting to see if Movistar push out aggressively and make a mistake like they have so many rounds before. Yeah, they're just playing this pack-based mentality right now, or Sangal, three players working around the map as a unit. Youngster more often than not being left to his own devices. <laughs> But this is the round that Sangal kind of have to win to maintain control. They mm. position in the driver's seat. You lose this one and they're chasing the game and they won't have any money going into the last round of the half. Oh, this is going to be a really big gunfight to Dodo. Finds the kill and x can't do anything about that. Smoke now fades. I'm pretty sure his footstep would have been heard there. Adam Essence to Dodo committed to these forward positions. What can they do from here? <laughs> Well, all they really need is Dodo to go again. But, oh, jeez, instantly traded out Adam Essence again. Adam Essence is completely unknown. Good for the first. Can't get the second. Lots of damage done, though. And this could be just a little bit of cleanup, a little bit of spray and pray. Bomb taken off the board. And a nice little spray from Mopaz will net Koi the sixth round. And finally, back in the lead. Yeah. Three in a row coming through for them now. And like I said, the money is a bit of a disaster for Sangal. It's going to be pots and pans they piece together coming into the last round of the half. Can they level it up going into their CT side? I mean, they've already got a CT side to be proud of with five rounds to their name, right? Yeah, I mean, even if you, if, if even if all this, this is all that they're able to accomplish, 
definitely going to be feeling comfortable and confident. With this being their map pick, I said it right. Got to believe that they've got something up their sleeve. But it looks like it's a Tech 9 round here. I was hoping for the rush. I do love a good Tech 9 rush. Unfortunately, rush not to be. It's going to be a 1-2 swing. And Sasa will get the first kill there. And that's going to be a free rifle upgrade for them. See if they can leverage that into something a little bit more. They've got some good presence around the map. They've already filtered in all the way up towards this B site. But it's so heavily bunkered down. Cracking in is going to be incredibly difficult. But here we go. They're going to try and make it happen. The flash is disgusting. They get caught out in the open instantly. Sprayed down. Mm. Last few players have to make miracles happen. And unfortunately... All right. Good for one. But it's all down to Sasol. He doesn't have control of the bomb. That's lost in Narnia. There's not too much that he can get done. <laughs> yeah. You're not going into that realm, Sasol. Unfortunately, you are forbidden. <laughs> Movistar, Koi, their three players left alive are the gatekeepers. Now, good defense coming through. Despite the fact they lost the first player, they've still managed to make the situation work. There's been a few rounds that Movistar have lost the first frag, but still gone on to win the round. Which is a good testament that they're still able to recover those sorts of rounds. And normally that's quite difficult on the CT side of Overpass. You know, you almost always want three players on that B bomb site, and sometimes they've locked it down with less. However, nice shot from Sal. So the problem is the time is what he's working against right now as well. He's gotten every single kill this round. He's made a step. They don't seem to have realized. Gonna try and sneak his way in. Nope, Davy G's got him covered. Rifle spotted, and that's the last round in the half. We'll take a quick break, and when we get back, we'll see how this map concludes.
We are back. Second half, first map about to get underway. A bit of a blunder from Sangirl. They were leading, what, 5-4, I want to say. Could even have been 5-3, maybe, at one point. They then lost to an Eco Sam, and things have not been the same since then. Yep, and then there was uh, an unfortunate mishap with a bomb that didn't get planted, and that may have hit the mental a little bit, but now we're going to hit the site hard and fast, and there you go. It's a good kickoff, but trades do go back and forth, and now the site is Ooh. slowly being locked down as the Dodo last one left alive, and, well, he won't be long for this world. Yeah, that was a really good multi-kill coming through from Xcloud to save the day because even though Movistar were executing into a full stack on that B-bomb site, they still pretty made fairly light work of it with the kills they were able to get. But then Xcloud has his say, and ultimately that's the final say. So Sangal finally back to winning ways. Good start for them here on their CT side. Bearing in mind, they did win the, the first pistol as well. And... Uh... Unfortunately, the second round just did not go their way, but for Movistar, forcing up here is just not an option without that bomb plant. So for Sangal, this is a great opportunity to create a little bit of a runaway for themselves. Now, a little bit of noise has been made all the way down the bottom of the map. So Movistar's positioning for now is somewhat known. Xcloud's going to be holding waiting to see if any of them towards long spot the shoulder and that's going to be a great follow-up with a second to boot ag comes out oh man that's just not okay just as the last one left alive and he will not be long for this world either yeah good work coming through sangal just asphyxiating their opponents lining them up knocking them down scoreline leveled up once again and that's going to be a good boost to confidence for them gangini has got the orp here as well in this first gun round it's not really a bonus round for Sangal. They only get $1,400 if they lose here. So if they aren't able to carry any weapons through, it's going to be touch and go in the next. But they have enough to certainly make a mark on the defense. Not ideal, though. Two MP9s and a FAMAS going up against the might of five AKs. Actually, I'd say this is a really important round in the grand scheme of things, you know. Will give us a, a leading team once again, but economy is... A huge consideration here for both of these teams. For Sangal, winning this would really springboard them quite nicely. We'll see if they can hold on to that for now as Movistar. We'll take a leaf out of their book. Play a little bit further back here. Wait to see if anybody tries to get a little bit aggressive. Gets a little bit silly. Maybe catch them off guard. Play a little bit of information. Starve as well. Don't allow Sangal to read into their playbook. So now it looks like they're going to start heading up towards long. They have to be aware, right? We've got a player lying in wait for them to come around oh, the corner. No. Repositioning for Mars in hand. Spots the shoulder, but cannot get the kill. Yeah, that was always going to be very tough for Linus. Three players heading in his direction, kind of relying on the off angle. But then I think his shoulder was spotted. So the aggressing tease knew he was there. x Flood gets a frag back. Wait, what? He's in the back lines right now. He's completely behind them. Himself and Salsal, men on a mission with their MP9s. It's a lot of info for Sangal. That's why they've been able to rotate the extra player up into that A-bomb site. Youngster with Ganguinho, they're working to lock this down. And they've also closed the door in behind Movistar, so they're going to have to commit to A now. Man, this crunch is going to be nasty. Beautiful timing as the players line up. Now Movistar with only two players left alive. Adam S on such low HP and yet still able to make some magic happen. x Here, here's the steps, but it's a great pincer from around the back. And now the quick pivot over towards this A site. Two versus one. And this is more than doable. Nagino is going to have to make miracles happen here with this AWP. Adam is not so low HP, but HP doesn't matter when you have the big green in hand. Bomb will get planted, however. And Ganguinho, well, couldn't stop the plant, doesn't have a kit, makes the right call. Yeah, it's going to be enough for him to just head for the hills here. He doesn't want to carry this gun into any dangerous territory where he could potentially lose it. He knows the money's bleak going into that next round as well, so well work from Movistar. I mean, they didn't have much going for them there, did they, with the way the door had kind of been closed in on them. They had to find a, a way to work their way through that situation, so well done coming through from them. They found... A successful solution. I mean, Adam S's triple certainly did play a role. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's always a, a huge momentum shifter when you do have those players that can go nuclear when needed. Adam yeah. S does a great job of doing that, even with so little HP, no fear. Some great action from him to give Movistar finally around on board here. And this is where things might get a little bit spicy for Sangal. 
They've got the barest minimum amount of cash to work with here, and they are opting for a force. Now, this could be a great idea, and it could go terribly. Yeah, I mean, I, I back it because there's enough firepower that just lies on utility. It means they won't be able to make many plays on the CT side. Ganguinho is going to be a big factor in the sort of a run with the AWP as well. Although it's xCloud who's playing in towards party right now. How does he stay there, stay there is my question. He's got no one watching lowers and nobody playing bottoms right now. In the meantime, T-Side's just executing straight into the B-bomb site. They're going to lose more than they would have liked. And Exploud now exposed, and he's going to shut Adam S down on the opposite side of the map. I mean, he's playing by himself right now. Huge amount of responsibility, but he's making it work. Listen, to call that execute brave uh, would be <laughs> a very kind way of putting it. Um, very aggressive, very little util used there. Getting caught out in the open so easily, mowed down very quickly. And now only two players left alive. And now Mopos is chilling, trying to create a little bit of a distraction. HE's going to come through, but Sangal, they're not going to bite. Oh, making its way over towards A. The timing on this is huge. x has no idea that someone has crossed past him. But Ooh. now he will spot out one. Manages to get away, but now it's going to be a little bit of happy feature. And the bomb needs to keep going. Stododo cannot turn around. Now they know free and clear. Bomb can get planted. But the rotations have already come in. You can hear the players moving up through stairs here. Now Stododo, this is a great reposition from him. Moving out in towards bank. See if he can spot one. Spots the barrel of the gun. Waits to see if he'll just peek out. But no, instead, heads back over towards default. Bomb going to get planted. This is unbelievable. I can't believe they've managed to do this. Yeah, they've gotten themselves into a really good position considering where they were 30 seconds ago. Two versus three post plant. They've been able to get back to some decent post plant positions as well. At least Stododo has. Mopaz will take up his position in the front lines right now. He's the one who's going to force the fight. He's just looking for the timing on the swing right now. Catches the player with the nade out. Free frag comes through. Takes the contact away from Stododo. That allows for him to get a kill. And now Ganguinho has no idea what to do. So he's going to pull his knife out and head for the hills. Movistar, what a way for them to get across the line in the round there. And I will say, I think x Floud completely overplays his hand. I mean, sure, he does well to get that first kill towards Fountain, but he has no need to continue to try and take the fights in bathrooms. You know there's 30 seconds on the clock, and you don't have any teammates on the A-bomb side either. You're the only player between the opponents on that part of the map, so I think he should have prioritized his life a lot more. Honestly, in the same vein, though, like, the way that Movistar were executing in towards B was very questionable, but you've got to give them credit for being able to stabilize in the way that they did. And a lot of that came down to timings. And, you know, for Stododo to have been able to make his way all the way up towards the A site, completely unchecked, completely unseen, it created such a huge opening for them. And now, unfortunately, Sangal finds himself back down onto an eco. Ganguinho held onto the AWP. See just how much he's going to be able to get done with it. Also, x has been a freaking rock star this map so far. Yeah, he has. And I guess that's why they've got to give him a bit of license to do what he would like to. Ganguinho is a dead man. Oh. And I'm just like, come on. You got the orb. I, I get that you have to take initiative, but that's just so much of a gamble. That's like betting on green in roulette. <laughs> just... It's an obscure reference. <laughs> what are the chances? Like 1 in 36 or something like that? This is not worth it, mate. Either way, should be no chance in the round as a result. Movistar march on to double digits here. I mean, you know what? You say that. This has been a fairly decent eco so far. But one... I mean, they've lost bomb. Like... <laughs> <laughs> this is an absolute disaster. However, it's only Salsal left to hold the line, and there's still a good 40 odd seconds left to go. So, Moby Star Koi should be able to clean this up quite nicely. If Salsal can just get one more, one more, this would be a phenomenal eco for them. But he's taking so much heavy fire and unfortunately cannot make it happen. It was close, it was almost a great eco, but now you gotta settle for just an okay eco. Ten seven mm -hmm. must win round coming up now for Sangal. Loses next round eleven seven anti eco twelve seven. Good luck coming back from that. Writing would be on the wall at that point. Mopal's the player we highlighted. He's standing up really nicely sixteen and seven. But it's been a really well rounded team performance from the Spaniards or should I say majority Spaniards. 
As for Zangle, you mentioned xCloud already. Salsal's had some good rounds, but we need more from most of the players. And it looks like they're trying to play with pace, at least uh, just as a man on a mission. And that mission is to the underworld. Oh. If that had actually netted a kill, that would have been ridiculous. Smoke spray from Narnia. But uh, unfortunately for Movistar Koi, Youngstar will survive. It's another really aggressive push out of Monster that's instantly just slapped down from Sangal. I think Movistar really do need to move away from that kind of um, chaotic, catalytic attempt. And now they have to slow down again. Try to find some of that early info. They know they're at a deficit. They know they're at a huge disadvantage. And they can't afford to let this round slip away from them. Because as much as it's a must win for Sangal, Movistar's money's not in a great spot. And losing this round would put them in serious danger. So they're going to have to try and leverage every little opportunity that they have. They're baiting out a lot of Sangal's util as well. And they've managed to hold on to quite a lot of their own. So this could bode very well for them once they actually mount the exit. Yeah, here, the, here we go. This is the execute you're referring to. They start to make their way forward. It's actually Ganguinho who's in this forward position. Do they consider him? Considering the fact there was a CT here who's just lost their life, Ganguinho and Linus working in tandem right now. Oh, Stododo can't finish off what he had started. Ganguinho picks up the orb, but he'll die to the wall bang. Adam S now left in a one versus three. Barely any time to work it here as well. There's no chance for him. That just felt like an eternity he had his nade out for. And it will be a vital round that goes the way of Sangal. I mean, this has been a pretty interesting half, all things considered. You know, you get Sangal winning the, the pistol and the force. They lose the bonus. Uh, they, they have to go down onto a save again. And maybe start get a bit of a runaway going. Sangal struggled to get some cash back in the bank. They get cash in the bank again. They got some guns to work with. They play that round really well. And now they've managed to wrestle back some semblance of control. And as mentioned, you know, for, for Mobistar Koi losing that round, it's put them in such a tight spot economically. They're still going to be able to you know, string something together, but it's not going to be ideal by any measure. So for Sangal, they're realizing this is the perfect opportunity to springboard themselves to, at the very least, an even out scoreline. Yeah, it's a good point. Win this, then the next round is for free. Two for the price of one. Everybody loves a special. You could say the same for Movistar though, right? Because Sangal, they don't have any money in the reserve bank either. Mm. Yeah, we're definitely on a, on a serious knife's edge here. And it's worse so for Sangal because Movistar getting to 11, forcing Sangal down onto another save. That's going to put Movi... Well, I mean, Sangal will have a little bit of... No, oh, because they just won that last round. Ooh, dangerous. Yeah, Movistar getting up to 11, potentially up to 12 map points. Sangal need to win this round desperately if they want to survive just a little bit longer. Now, we've abandoned the monster push. Ooh. Instead, we're going for a short push here. Yeah. Somehow, Adamus has made his way all the way up here, totally uncount. Oh my god, youngster, shut down so easily. Adamus will get traded out, however. But it's pulled a little bit of attention across. And for now, Movistar making the way into bathroom. What is xCloud looking at? It's a free upgrade for Mopaz and a relatively free and clear sight. Ganginho, though, pushing it so aggressively. The blinded no scope gets the kill. Tries to go in for the second, but he's traded out. Bomb still not planted. Movistar fighting for a little bit of space here on the site. With only two players left alive for Sangal, it's going to have to be a perfect retake. Yeah, Mopar's going to get that AWP out of there. And that should be the round done. I don't even know if Sangal want to consider going for this. They carry two guns through. Youngster can afford to buy in the next. If they lose one, then they barely have anything to work with in the round afterwards. But they know there's still some sort of life left in this round right now. They've got a smoke. They've got a kit on Linus as well. A 2v3. As they start to make their way forward, Mopaz is in position with that orb. It's going to be so tough. WG with the Tech 9. There's an AK. Yeah, that frag, that should be enough to just lock the round in here. Sarsal's going to have to call it a day. And Movistar have done it. That's their 11th round coming through. Really good work from Mopaz in particular. And I mean, Ad I love the way that they played off of Adam S's position, right? He found a way to slink into that B bomb site. He took a lot of attention there, and they just slowly walked their way up past him. That's why X Cloud was by himself and got caught off guard. Mm hmm. Didn't realize that uh, the fake was happening. And unfortunately, paid the price for it. Movistar played that so well. I'm still kind of losing it at the blinded no scope. I think that was uh, a yeah, little bit, <laughs> a little bit illegal. But they're gonna be happy that. Uh, 
They at least managed to do a little bit of damage. Unfortunately, a little bit of damage is not good enough right now. Only managing to hold on to one of those rifles. It's going to be back down. You know what? You could uh, you could force up maybe some pistols here. Maybe bring out something a little bit bigger, like a hero SMG, <laughs> if you can call an SMG <laughs> um, a hero weapon. Yeah. Uh, it's Never tough. heard of that one before myself. Yeah, frankly. well. I mean, you get hero orbs, right? So surely you could get a hero SMG. You get the hero rifle as well, yeah. But the hero SMG is just like <laughs> never. The, the hero never really has an SMG. Like that's like maybe the sidekick or <laughs> the villain. I don't know. It's the 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 hero we wanted, but not the one. It's an SMG. Yeah, yeah. There we go. There's something in there. <laughs> Either way, not much in this round yet for Sangal. They've got a hero AK that's been carried through here from Sarsal, of course. So he's gonna have to be the man that does the damage. But this should be 12 for free. This should be Mopi start getting to map points on their opponent's map pick. Dangerous, dangerous position for Sangal to look in, and they were looking so good in that first half as well. You gotta give props to Mopi Star coming down into yeah, this sure. half, managing to claw it back on their T side. It's nothing to uh, to turn your nose up at. And now they've gone for a heavy gamble towards this B side. There's a little bit of presence over towards A, but not terribly much. And the rifle is all the way over towards B as well. So not too much that's going to be able to get done here. And Movistar will kick things off with a nice little early pick off there. A site will start to get reinforced, but let's face it, it should be another free and easy win. But Movistar not going to get too eager. Gonna make any mistakes if they can help it. The dink coming through. Oh my god. The deagle goes nuts. Another one? Does he have one more in him? Oh man, that bomb has been dropped in Linus's crosshair. He wants oh another. And god. Linus takes what Linus wants. 2v2. It's it's gonna have to be an ace toucher with the death deagle. He's got three kills so far. Low HP on Mopaz. He's chipping away at just Linus. Don't you dare. Oh my goodness, they know exactly where he is. He's going to have to fight his way out of this one. Rafting off the shots, three bullets in the magazine. Mopaz will extinguish the threat. That's his 24th kill, but an important one. Jeez, that was way too close for comfort. It wasn't even the hero rifle that got all of the value. It was a random deagle. And Linus is terrifying. I mean, if that's what he's capable of with a deagle, I shudder to think. But unfortunately for Sangal, they realize now... It's a last chance saloon. They need four consecutive rounds just to take us into OT. That doesn't even guarantee them a lifeline here. And we, you know, best of three, you've got a little bit of wiggle room to work with. There is kind of a bounce back possibility in that third map, but that's only if you can make your way through the second. And the second map is Movistar's map pick. So things starting to look a little bit dire for the moment. Yeah, for sure. Four map points here, four opportunities for Movistar to finish off the job. And, I mean, it was Sangal who got off to a good start on their CT side, right? Yeah. So, it's just been a, a good run of form coming through from the T's. What, I think that's uh, four rounds in a row. No, two rounds in a row, Sangal, they were able to win. Mm -hmm. They've actually just won the one on the CT side so far. Yeah. Yeah, they came into no, this. No, I'm lying. Of... Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm lying. It's three. Because they won the pistol, converted, and they won one gun round. So right. Three. So, we, we, we came in 7-5 in favor of Movistar. Yes, um, exactly. And yeah, I mean, they've still managed to win five rounds on their own T side, so credit where it's due. Sangal have taken a lot of space here again, but far less aggressive space, right? This is just kind of informative space. And now the pop through monster once again and again, it's gonna, you know, come under some heavy fire here. Youngster survives this time. That is amazing because it means that they have to clear him, which creates a secondary angle to fire from. Now Sudoro, last player left alive. These monster pops have not gone well for Movistar. And this is one more in the feather, or one more cap in the feather. One more feather in the cap, good lord, for Sangal, as they will stop another monster pop in its tracks. Yeah, absolutely. Such an important round for them to win, obviously just keeping themselves alive. As you say, Youngster doing some big work as Dodo does not stand. Oh, 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 right. You, that, uh, you know what? <laughs> X-Floud, that's my bad. I'm sorry, <laughs> homie. That was completely and utterly my fault. And Dodo tries to fake with the death cam there as though he's rotated and started running straight up to Fountain. Linus hasn't taken the bait, and it's such a tough position to root out. There's no way Stododo kills Linus in the corner here. If you see what <laughs> I'm doing with that one. Okay, mm -hmm. oh, there we go. All right, we're good. There's no way, right? He's going to save the gun here, I reckon. That makes the most sense. Unless... Nothing on offer. 
Unless nah, okay. turns the burners on. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that, that would be pretty magical in and of itself, but uh, definitely the right call to make here. Yeah? Again, I mean, cash not going to be a good one here for Movistar. They, uh, they don't have any sort of loss streak to fall back on. So uh, they're going to be feeling the economic Yeesh. crunch. Yeah, that's true. That does not look great, does it? No. I mean, barely going to be any upgraded pistols. Justin and WG, they could afford to dip their toes. But that's about it. 12-9, Sangal. Needed to win four rounds in a row to force OT. They've checked one of those rounds off the list. How many gun rounds? 12-10, one Sangal win this. Should they win this, then the gun... There's actually just one full gun round between Sangal and OT. See if they can make it happen. Nice little boost up there. Sedoto doesn't spot out too much, so... They know they've got a little bit of space to work with here. And start to funnel up a little bit. Need to be aware of Mopaz. But, of course... I'm gonna try to, uh... Circumvent a lot of the damage if they can. He's just kind of positioned in for any late sort of rotation. See if he can catch someone off guard. But Ganginho holding down this B site. I mean, the moment somebody peeks their heads out, that should be tickets. Yeah, should be. That's the key word. Stododo, the only option for Movistar to win this round here. And it looks like he wants to clear out this corner. He does, you know. He's going to step into x Floud and... Well, he survives the shot, so at least he's got a bit of information to play with now. And he knows he has to go for the kill. He doesn't have the luxury of playing Ooh. the long game. And, well, the kill almost gets gifted to him. There is an AWPer on the opposite side, though. Stodo. He's able to get the line. Oh. Not only does he get the line, he gets the kill as well. Now all the pressure's on Linus. He's the only player on the same bomb site. Quick rotation coming through, and it's going to arrive on the scene just in time. Free rifle upgrade for just as well. Davy G, he's going to be offered up as bait, but it's going to take more than just one player as bait to slow down line as he has been terrifying the whole way through this series. Recovered rifle, lost. Saved AWP, lost. Mopar is the only person left who can make something happen, and all he can do is die. Okay, well, I mean... Good hold coming through from Sangal, considering things were looking a little bit nervy there at one point of the base of uh, off the back of Stododo's multi. All's well and ends well. Here's the gun round I was referencing, the one gun round between Sangal and OT, because Movistar only get twenty four hundred dollars if they lose this round. That's not even Galil's and armor going into the the next round, which would be the last round of regulation. Mm -hmm. It's happening, Sam. <laughs> The OT is on the air. But for now, looking for a little bit of aggression over towards B again. Oh, angling towards Monster gives me slight PTSD. But maybe this time around they can have a little bit more luck with it. And they kind of have to. So much riding on this round for both teams. Nope! Monster Pops just do not work. Sangal, have your number. Two players already down. Bomb is going to be forced to rotate away. And they haven't over-rotated yet. Sangal still keeping bodies over towards A. They know that every now and then Movistar will make a bit of noise and mount a full-on rotation. That's exactly what's happening here. Yeah. There. Yeah. Just seemed a bit peculiar in terms of the timing on the exec through monster because it's not like they were doing anything on the other side of the map they just had adam s playing playground a guy chilling chilling by himself in lowers and then a flash over the top for the monster to push just very disconnected haphazard stuff coming through from the t side and that i mean that's not reliable at all mm. a flash play through the smoke and monster tunnels not surely that's not the best you have to offer in your last gun round of regulation right this is the round where you fall back on your percentage base plays most reliable strategies and options. There's only 25 seconds left. Are they calling it? Because they know they've barely got anything to work with. They are, Sam. They're wow. heading for the hills. They're saving their guns. And we're going the distance here on Overpass. Good lord. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's really rough when you consider the fact that the monster pops just have not been working pretty consistently. So to see them opt for that again... And, of course, have it not work out yet again. But I think that, you know, once you've lost those first two players, opting to call it, opting to pull back and hold on to their weapons when you know you're going to have no money into the next round, that just becomes the correct call to make. 
Yeah, true. It's just a tough pill to swallow in that situation. Mm -hmm. But it definitely is the correct call in that situation. Just uh, far less than ideal. Not what you want to do, but at least now they have something to carry through into the round. They do use a pause. I'm sure they last pause mm -hmm. to talk about how they're going to approach it. And uh, you know what? Just go for the monster rush. Why not? Just a couple flashes over the top. They've tried it a few times. Hasn't worked, but maybe maybe now it will work. <laughs> Sam. Maybe, maybe this time. Yeah. As, uh, as old Einstein once said, um, you know, doing the same thing over and over again and expecting the same results is tenacity. It's uh, consistency. Oh. Yes. Okay. Uh, I haven't little, heard that one. Yeah, before. little known fact. That was that was actually what he said. Um, <laughs> I'm talking absolute okay. nonsense, of course. Yeah. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, guys, we do have a little bit of a tech issue once again. So uh, you're gonna be back with us before we head into our inevitable overtime. But I'm I'm a little bit disappointed i think with movistar they had such a runaway start to their t side things were looking really good they've had multiple opportunities to close it out but props to sangal they've done really well to keep stemming that tide i think it's just the way that movistar have kind of fallen flat on their face is the difficult thing to stomach right um the way they've been losing the rounds they have think about the double from stadota with the zor it was mm -hmm. an eco around that but probably should have won that round and then the previous gun run we saw just getting played out now as well, where they just flash two players through monster. I don't really mind that strat, but I think you've got to be proactive on the opposite side of the map. So either taking contact long or taking control of bathrooms, because at that point, the CTs are communicating that you're starting to take control A. Mm. And then the players over at B, thinking about a rotation, what support util they could throw. That's when you pop through the monster tunnel. But there was nothing happening on the other side of the map. They just go straight through dry and the CTs were waiting for them. Yep. And then, of course, as soon as those two players get taken out, you're now forced into a save scenario because you know that, yeah. you know, last chance saloon to close it out. And two of the players coming into this round are likely just going to be on a couple of upgraded pistols, not terribly much more than that. And for Sangal, I mean, they're going to be feeling a lot more comfortable with this one. OT very much on the horizon here. I yeah. didn't expect it to be quite this back and forth. I think they're coming into this. You were the one that said it, right? Before we even uh, kicked off, we were still in the green room. And you said, this is this could be a really, really close game. And I was like, ah, but you know, Sangal, <laughs> the teams that they've beaten are, you know, not kind of top of the pops teams. And Koi have made it to the major. So like, surely, surely this is a, an easier one for Koi. But it's, it's definitely been a bit more of an uphill battle than they than they would have liked yeah for sure thankfully we're going to be getting back into the battle here remember movie stars you said they got the major around the corner so how many strats are they saving how many new things are they testing out doesn't matter score line at the top of your screen that's what does matter x cloud is 17 for 19 i think he was like 17 and 12 or something so he has not fragged in a while thankfully for him his teammates have linus is up to 21 and sousel 19 so it's looking good here. They've also got the opening pick in this last round of regulation. Mm -hmm. Well, Mopaz, our player to watch, certainly has been a player to watch. But uh, we'll see if he can help to recover this round for his team. Sangal have already put themselves on the path to OT in a very dominant fashion here. Giving that opening kill, forcing Moby Star to really slow down and rethink their approach. All right, well, four versus five, all or nothing right now for Movistar. If they lose this round, we wipe the slate clean and we run it back in OT on OP. If Movistar are able to win this, then that is game done and dusted. And we head to their map pick with them leading the series. And they're going to put all their eggs in one basket here. 35 seconds on the clock, eggs egg in towards the safe site. Not much utility. Three players coming up from bathrooms, one coming up from long. Utility raining in. They're struggling to even find a kill right now. Nothing being offered up. I mean, Adam S finds a frag. Linus falls forward, but he will frag. Kills going back and forth right now, but we're down to a 1v1, Sam. Mopar swaps over onto a rifle here. Just oh, a little, brother. Something with a little bit more of a power punch to it. Smoke comes out, giving him just enough time to get that bomb planted. Now, it's all about happy feet. Can he spot Youngster? Oh, dear God. He almost makes it away, but he's not able to reposition quickly enough. And Youngster will clutch that round for Sangal. We are going to overtime. Damn, down to the one versus one to split these two teams in regulation. And Sangal have fought back to bring it into overtime. 12-8, they were down four rounds in a row. 
What a recovery here. But it's not over just yet. Either one of these two teams still in with a chance to come out with the win on this map, right? I mean, overtime really is kind of anyone's game. Um, you've got so much to work with, so much to play with. You don't have to worry so much about ecos and double ecos and managing that economy so much. There's a real opportunity here. Very evil, uh, even footing. So for Movistar, going to look to try and catch some early space. And Sangal instantly kind of forcing them to slow down again, taking away a lot of that map space from them. It'll take them a moment to commit to anything. And I like that as well. I think that, you know, if, you, if you're too quick to commit to a specific game plan, that's when things can start to go awry, especially when it hasn't been going your way for quite some time. Yeah, it's a good point. Momentum has certainly been a big factor here. And Sangal, they're the team with momentum coming into overtime. Well, maybe still going to be kicking themselves that it slipped to this point, but hey, I guess more reps on overpass now, right? More opportunity for them to get some game time in on the map. And they will find the opening frag here in overtime. Commence proceedings. You don't want to be the team who fights back to force OT to then drop the ball in overtime, because that also sucks, right? Ooh. Little information gone there. I like that Sangal are also playing this pretty chill. Not being overly aggressive and just waiting it out, right? They know that the T's have to come to them. That's generally how this works. So hold the line. Get some of that information with some of your boosts and some of your jump spots. Now, footsteps raining through, but it's going to be just instantly cracking in onto the site. Will get traded, however. Sassel still alive. He has been so good for this team. So many rounds. Great util coming through. Chip damage to keep Movistar on their toes, but bomb has already been planted. Sassel is still skulking around on the site here, looking for the perfect moment to push through. Spams into the smoke. Doesn't connect anything, but gives away his position. It's a perfect trade-off from Ganguinho, and that's going to be Sangal Esports with a quick defuse for the first round in OT. Yeah, I feel like Sang uh, Salsal plays his hand to perfection there because he knows exactly when to pounce and really force the issue. When he swings forward, he draws the player out of the smoke, so it didn't even matter that he actually died there because he knew he had his teammates around him to get the kill straight afterwards. So, great work coming through there from Salsal. He's elevated his game massively here from the second half of regulation and carried that through into OT. Linus as well, it must be said. 46 kills between the two of them. 25 rounds played so far. And it's Sangal who opened up their account first. It's been a while since they've tasted the lead. <laughs> I say Sangal play off of each other quite well. That's been a, a definite highlight for me, for them so far. We'll see if they can use it to springboard them to this first map victory. Maybe start now opting to move away from the B side this time. Start heading up towards long. And again, you've got to expect there to be someone holding the line here. They don't clear it! Oh, dear lord, they do not clear it. And it's just an easy spray down. Two for one special. You said it. Everybody likes a special. And Sangal will find themselves in a four versus two once again. Yeah, I mean, we, want, we saw Linus in that position in regulation. And he got cleared out with the FAMAS. Wasn't able to do anything. This time, he punishes them with the multi- and it's such a devastating way to lose players as well because it's not even like you're set up for the egg egg or you haven't even been able to use the utility. Four versus two down. They've got next to nothing to show for it. I say next to nothing because just as in the Bebop site right now, the problem is Tododo has the bomb in bathrooms and Youngster's in such a, a good spot right now. I love the way he's playing his position. He knows he can give up the B site and sure he goes down, but that doesn't me mean he did the wrong thing, right? He was... Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, good decision making from him, good position, and his team should be able to finish off the job. Yeah, I mean, with, with Bomb all the way on the other side of the map, yeah, just lost player left alive. Position well telegraphed at this point. There's just not going to be too much more that he can get done. Sangal going to be incredibly happy with how this overtime has kicked off. And we're so close to the end, so close to the finish line here. Yeah, Over twice. Because it was 5v3 in that one uh, anti-eco or the one anti-eco round for Sangal, where Movistar were ecoing. They had that orb from Stododo. He got the two kills. And then there was the 1v1 in the last round of regulation. And now they're behind by two. These close, close rounds. Movistar need to find a way to tighten it up a little bit here. Starting to look a little bit more unhinged as the, uh, the map has gone on. And that... that 
clean play that we saw earlier, the beautiful util usage that we saw from them on their CT side. They've really struggled to find the same kind of value here on the T side. Good bit of early util. Sangal have given up so much of the space on the map this time around. Once again, just waiting for Movistar to kind of walk into their crosshairs. A little bit of spray comes through there. doesn't quite connect onto anything. Sasu will be forced off, though. Yeah, sprayed. you can see that Movistar, they don't want to make any mistakes. They don't want to make any missteps. They know that they have to... They have to get at least one round here in the first sets of overtime. And they're setting up for a big exec in towards this B bomb site. It's a good call as well because someone's just shifted away from the site. It's Sousel. Ganginio cuts down the first. So at least he's able to get a kill. He spots the second coming through. Finds the frag as well, but he's still by himself. That's no problem though. Wonderful third frag coming through from the Ukrainian Orpa. Almost single-handedly shutting down Movistar. And it looks like Movistar are going to be carrying zero rounds through into their second half of OT. What a round from Ganginio. I mean, looking at his... his you know, scoreline at the moment. He hasn't been the flashiest player so far. But every now and then, when you need him to step up, he has some really solid moments. And this is just one of those where he's done Ooh. so much to help. However, we've brought it back down to a two versus two. This is definitely turn around a bill. Oh, Ganginho pulls out the Deagle. Now it's the Dodo. 20 HP and a dream taps oh, the bomb. No. There's no way X Cloud is just that good. There's just no time. They've managed to whittle it away down to the end. Movistar so close to bringing it back in their control. And again, another round where it just slips away. I can't believe Stodoto doesn't stick the plant there. I guess he hears the initial step from X Cloud and he expects him to continue just surging forward. So he pulls his gun out, but X Cloud, I think, in turn might have spotted that he got off the plant. So he just tucks behind the corner and you can just see. The despair from Stododo moving his scope up and down. 15-12, a flawless first half of OT from Sangal. Means we flipped the script. They've got three map points now on their map pick. And it is map point. If they can, you know, drive this round home, that's that's gonna be it. They win their map pick. So for Mopi Star, this these next couple of CT rounds are gonna be incredibly important. Make or break for them if they want to give themselves an advantage going into the second map, their own map pick, which we do expect them to win. This is very, very, very important for them. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Movistar are going to be kicking themselves if they haven't been able to finish off the job. As you say, really important for Sangal to get across the line here on their map pick. And it looks like they should be able to do exactly that. What can Movistar conjure up on the CT side? Has to be flawless. As for Sangal... And we saw this approach quite a lot from them in regulation on the T side. Happy to just play three players long, two players making their way through towards bathrooms, and then eventually exec onto the A bomb side. Not like they always have someone who's lurking and having that presence elsewhere. Kind of just relying on Movistar and not playing too actively on their CT side and getting too much information, but they do have players in a forward position in bathrooms right now. Bathroom completely locked down. No swing to trade off. Stenodo will get that first kill. Bit of util out towards long because they've realized that's very likely going to be a pop. A great Molotov to slow things down there and to allow Adamus to reposition. Sorry, not Adamus, Debbie G. And he's in a great spot here to spray down. Good for one, not good for the second, however. And despite some great util usage, the site is cracked open. The bomb is planted and the only two players left alive are rotating in from the other side of the map. They're not holding hands. They're not in the buddy system. No swings available, which puts them in such a dangerous position. And now they have to somehow clutch this out. So little time left on the clock. Everything oh. on the line for them. Spots the leg. The spray comes through. The headshot does connect. And now, beautiful shot from Mobos all the way towards the top of A site. They've cleared out the players and all they have to do is stick the defuse. My goodness, how have they made that look so easy? I was ready to go back on camera. I thought the game was over. <laughs> I thought Sangal had done the job. What's that, a 4 versus 2 post plant? 4 versus uh, 3v2 at least. And Movistar Koi make the magic happen. As you say, they weren't really able to work as a unit there on the retake. One coming through from long, one from bathrooms. But that was no problem. And now it's Sangal who dropped the ball. Okay, game is still alive right now. And Movistar need to win another two to uh, run it back thereafter. 
th I mean, that round got so crazy towards the end there. I thought we were done and dusted for those two players to somehow make miracles happen. I, d I mean, Sangal kind of isolate a couple of 1v1s for themselves out towards bathroom. They've been able to kind of play off of one another. Maybe that makes it a little bit easier. But that being said, Movistar had no right to get all of those kills. So well done, keeping themselves afloat just a little bit longer. Again, we're going to see them fan out a bit more. Now they can taste it again, right? But they know that everything is still on the line. So looking to get that early little bit of information here. Looking to kind of cause a bit of chaos, a bit of dissension in Sangal's ranks. Yeah, they just got to keep a clear head here. This is where the IGL Linus and the most experienced player on the team, Salsal, have to just make sure that everybody knows exactly what's required of them. And look at this, I spoke about how Sangal have kind of been relying on Movistar playing a fairly passive CT side. And Mopas says, well, quite a lot of space has been afforded to us here. So I'm going to look to try and take that space. And as a result, he has gotten a lot of info. Still players in towards water here for Sangal. So it's a bit of a, a gamble from Movistar, from Movistar that they can completely rotate off that B-bomb site. But it's the correct call. We know that. And Movistar, well, looks like they do as well. So well poised to deal with what's about to get thrown at them. This should be an impenetrable defense. Just waiting for Gangino to peek out. Oh god, Mopaz. So much information gathered. Three oh. kills! The spray down is disgusting! And as the entirety of Sangal turn, I say the entirety, what's left of Sangal turn to face the danger from behind, a second danger emerges. And Salsal now left in a one versus five. It's going to take a miracle to make something happen here. Yeah, the only thing you could make happen is maybe just padding the stats, but that's not even going to happen. A flawless round from a V-Star Koi, giving Sangel a taste of their own medicine. They've won two so far in their CT side. I mean, both teams have now had opportunities to close out on Overpass, and both of them have failed. So, really, it's going to come down to who's able to just hold their nerve. Second OT. I'm all for it. I got nowhere to be. I mean, we had first OT, but now we can have second OT. And I think that would be uh, very entertaining. We we came into this thinking it was going to be an, a really good matchup, and boy, little did we know. For Sangal, I mean, this is a great opportunity for them, right? Previously, it was Movistar who sat on map point for so long, and Sangal had to claw their way back in. Finally, Sangal find themselves on, a, on an upper foot here, and they're the ones struggling to close it out, struggling to stem the tide a little bit here, as Movistar find themselves poised to take yet another OT. I mean, it's crazy to me just how back and forth this has continued to be on a map that I will point out, you know, we came into this and we, we said, oh, well, you know, Movistar Koi haven't looked great on Overpass recently. Uh, you know, small sample size. They've only played it about yeah. three times, but they've only won it once. So it wasn't looking great. And despite that, a really solid performance. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Maybe they kind of just wanted this to go to overtime so they could play more Overpass and get more practice in before they go to the major. Just get the, rap the reps in on the map. So, yeah, either way, we are getting a display. Can Sangal finish it off here in the first set of OT? Or will Mopi stop first successfully force another set? Oh, Adam S, he's been forced forward. Sarsal knows it. And the fact that Adam S actually gets a kill there before he goes down is probably the most he could have hoped for. One for one trade. You're always going to favor that as the T side, though. You're always mm -hmm. going to be happier with that. You create space. You turn out the numbers. Force rotations. Oh, man, youngster. Narrowly missing out on an opportunity there to get the kill on Mo Mo Mopoz, who gets blinded. But still comes out on top of that exchange. Ah, youngster getting a little bit too eager there. And unfortunately, has handed over a numbers advantage to oh. Movistar. Taking us that one step closer to a second overtime. Four versus two. Bomb has not yet committed. So, but they still have it in hand. But this B site is so heavily locked down at this point, And there aren't too many more options. A rotation towards A... Could be on the cards, but the rotations from Movistar Koi will be so quick. We need to make a decision here. And Ganginio's down. Bomb is lost. That's that's it. That's that's round. Second OT. Here we come. Yeah, absolutely. What a successful fight back from Movistar. There's surely no way for Linus. He's been the heavier hitter here for Sangal. But I think that this one is way out of the question. And there we go. Movistar have done it. We will run it back. And uh, you look at the numbers, the one guy who's dropped off massively for Sangal is x -Floud. He has mm. gotten one kill, Sam, since the 
Oh man, it's been I think since the 16th round he has gotten Jeez. one frag. So in the past 14 rounds, x has gotten one kill, guys. That is a problem for Sangal. Yeah, I mean, he, he started off incredibly well, but he's really yeah. kind of petered off towards the the latter half of the map. That being said, he's still ahead of Youngster, who has himself also been very, very quiet. And Mopez, our player to watch, is at a 2 KD. More than. I mean, he's just been an absolute demon the whole way through this. Really just keeping Movistar Koi alive keeping their hopes and dreams in this map. Oh, Tabby G, this is so cheeky. Up the slide, some beautiful damage to come through there. But he is now position known, and he's still good for one. He's going to try and make it a second, but can't be done. He will get traded out. But so much damage done over onto Sangal. Movistar should be able to pivot off of that. Yeah, should be is the key. And it does look like... Well, Sangal are going to start to shift their pieces as well right now. A minute left on the clock, early skirmish, things slow down thereafter. Pieces shifting across the board. Movistar still have some forward positions towards bathrooms and uh, towards long as well, which means they've rotated Mopaz back towards B. That makes sense. It's only just on the side of the map, and he has a number of guests on his doorstep right now. I'm not sure if they're welcome or not. We're going to find out soon enough. And we've seen Youngster play this position when the uh, the roles are reversed, and sometimes he gets ridiculous value, and sometimes he's insta-cleared. So what will it be this time? No, great little bit of value there from Jice. He takes a ton of damage in the interim, but he's good for one, and now he's able to sneak up into the smoke, get right up close and personal. Ganguinho doesn't know where he is, so just will be able to get a second. They have not cleared him. They let him live for so long, and Movistar will ride that all the way into a 16. Every single round so far here in overtime has been won by the CT side. That is yes. seven rounds in a row here in OT, and every single round has gone to the CT side. So when will that streak be broken? Because one of these two teams will have to break that streak to finally get across the line. And it's surprising because both teams looked so good on their T side in regulation. Now we get to OT, and the, the CT-sided nature of the map really kind of crops through so heavy-handedly. As you say, one round on T could be the huge difference maker here for either one of these two teams. Will it be Sangal? So now they start making their way in. I think that Molly missed. That's quite rough. Pretend that didn't happen. Yeah. What Molly? Sad. Yeah, never happened. Sorry. I, I didn't see anything. <laughs> oh! I saw okay. that though. It will not be this round. Well, I mean, it's not impossible, but it certainly hasn't gotten off to the start that Sangal would have liked. 5v3, getting picked apart right now, man. And notice how Movistar have just become a whole lot more active on their CT side since overtime. Aggressing long, pressuring short, pushing through the monster tunnel smoke, fighting bathrooms as well. I think they were more passive in, uh, in regulation, but they've certainly mm -hmm. turned up the pace. Now, Salsal has been very clutch for Sangal up to this point. Now he's uh, playing a, a bit more tip of the spear. as They try to make their way down towards the site. Yeah, now, Devity is in such a good spot. Information garnered and cheeky little rat play there. We'll get a nice trade-off. Youngster pushes out before the smoke can bloom. He's still able to get that shot. Well done there. However, it is traded out. Now line is lost. One left alive. Not too much to be done. And like we said, it's not going to be Sangal to take the first T-side. Mm, well, at least not in that particular round. Maybe the 33rd. The 33rd is their last opportunity. This is their last chance here to get a round up. Otherwise, they have to then emulate what they did in the first set of OT and what's been done to them twice in a row now. At least it will be the case if Movistar can win a third in a row here, second set of OT. Remember, guys, if you aren't too familiar with the numbers at this point, the magic number is 19. First to, num first to 19 here in OT number two wins the map. It is Sangal's pick. And after this, we go to uh, we go to Nuke, right? Which is a really good map for Movistar. So it feels like Sangal have to when you're on overpass. Mm -hmm. Two of the most CT-sided maps uh, in the map pool, back to back. Love that for us. Yeah, okay. true that. Got to get through this one first, though. And Movistar, again, so close that they can taste it. But you've got to make sure that you don't fall into that trap 
of knowing that you're close and then the mistakes start to creep in. I think Movistar might have been guilty of that towards the end of the first half. And once we hit overtime, they realize, okay, no, we got we to gotta tighten this up a little bit. So they've kept that streak going just that little bit longer for themselves. But it's a heavy-handed positioning over towards the B site. Yeah, great Molotov. Great, like, instinct that mm, maybe it is going to be here. And now the backstab. The backstab from Adam S could do everything. As now the monster pop comes through straight out onto the site. Instantly taken out. Just is a demon. Adam S from behind will get yet another one. And despite the fact that S Sangala able to get three for themselves, two rather, Movistar continue to clean up. Adam S from behind. There's just too many corners and angles to hold on to. And that will be Moby Star Koi getting themselves for the second time to map point. It felt like Moby Star were just given way too much space on that CT side there. They constantly had flankers. They constantly had players who were gaining information. They were always very well equipped with knowledge there as to how they should set themselves up. What was coming their way. And they actually performed really well. So great job coming through. From uh, from Movistar Koi, they lost the first three rounds in OT number one, flawless second half, and, and uh, well, flawless first half in OT two now as well. They control the game, Sam. They now have three opportunities here to finish off their opponent's map pick. Gotta make it happen. Like we said, not a single overtime round has gone the way of the T's. What is that? And the funniest thing is that it wasn't even him that got the kill, it was Gaguinho. <laughs> Despite the fact that we saw it from his perspective. But we do see a nice little trade-off here as once again, it's going to be a monster pop. But the line is held. And Movistar, this will not be the round to take on the T side. Mopaz has been phenomenal. But in a 1v3, just cannot make it happen. Yeah, it's, uh, what, what, what does that take the tally to now? 369, that's 10 in a row. 10 CT side rounds have been won in a row here in overtime. Not a single T sided round. We've played 10. There are two left. Nine. Movie star, well, two, nine in a row, was it? Because we, because we got 12, 12, and then it's four and. Yeah. And, okay. Yeah. So nine rounds in a row, plus the one from now. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so 10 rounds in a row CT side. It's a lot of CT. Movistar have got two opportunities. They've got two chances here to finish the job on, off on their T side. Can they make it happen? Mopaz, their kingpin, their crown jewel. He's already down to, down to 34 points of health. Not the best start, but he is still alive. And uh, a living Mopaz is a dangerous Mopaz. There you go, Devi G. Finally, they'll get their first Ooh. kill in onto the site there. Youngster position, well-known, well-telegraphed. He'll get taken off the board. That is the site cracked wide open, and the bomb still has to rotate in. There's still so much time for Sangal to reinforce the site and to get themselves back into position. x has spotted out Adam S. No, need. no ways, bro. No There's ways. There's no need for the trigger discipline here. You know they're on the B-bomb site. He's just the lurker playing with fire right now. Oh, Eventually, man. he will get the kill. That's one of the full HP players. Look how low Mopaz and WG are right now. This is looking really good for Sangal on the retake. Oh, Linus, that's a nasty spray transfer. Stododo catches a stray, and Sangal have made that look easy. Adam S's lack of awareness there is honestly game-breaking. It feels like that could have been a round that went their way, but he's so sure that he's unseen. He's not aware that there could be a counter lurk coming at him. And he's not able to reinforce the rest of the team. He's trying to catch a timing. And unfortunately, he's the timing that gets caught. And it's another round here for Sangal. And we, we are really staring down the barrel of yet another overtime. Yeah. Looking increasingly likely. <laughs> Is it going to be 12 CT sided rounds in a row? Or do we finally break the streak? What's the solution here from a V star? Doesn't look like it's anything different from the word go. Pretty stock standard default coming through from them. And they've been playing more direct in the past few rounds. So maybe just going to look to try and slow down the pace here in this next round. Linus has got 34 kills. He's matching Mopaz at this point. He's been getting better and better as the map's gone on. Mm -hmm. The only place that Mopaz is beating him right now is in deaths. Because the fact that Mopaz has only died 17 rounds or 17 times in well over 35 rounds is crazy to me. Yeah, especially when he's the player who attempts the most opening kills. 
Like, that yeah. is remarkable. But uh, they want to they wanna put this in put this to bed, if they can. X-Cloud going for a slightly more advanced position here, out towards bottom. Not advanced as we've seen from them in the past. We've seen some really cheeky pushes. But for now, I realize there's going to be a little bit of a presence here. Great flash to come through. It is a trade, however. You said it a little bit earlier on. Tees do love a good trade. Gives them so much to work with. As now Moby Star start moving back over towards B. Back over towards Monster. Surely they get a little bit of presence out towards Shorts. No, not a single piece of utility. Not expecting Youngster to advance down towards Monster. Youngster's only good for one, however. It's still three versus three, but the reinforcements have already arrived. Sangal are waiting on site. And they're not going to want to allow this bomb to go down at all if they can no help way. it. Well, blown it out somehow. Beautiful readjustment. Gets the headshot. Still two versus two. Bomb has been planted. This is still so winnable, but they cannot afford to make a single mistake. And that's mistake number one. Oh my, Stododo, one versus two to try and finish off the job for Movistar here in the second set of OT. Otherwise, we run it back in OT3. Stododo takes down the first. He knows that Diffuse isn't being stuck. Ganguinho does have a kit. Does he gamble stick the Diffuse? Looks like it. Is he going to stick the Diffuse all the way into OT3? Stododo says no, Zo. And finally, we have a T round one. It took us 15 rounds, Sam. 15, and eventually the job was completed. And you know what? It was the most important T round for Movistar Koi because it was the one that won them their opponent's map pick. We narrowly avoided the double overtime, but it felt like there was a lot to unpack.